A pool table is a strange item, isn't it? An enormous piece of furniture that's only good for one thing? To play a game? And only one game at that. My family had a pool table when I was growing up. It sat in the middle of our family room. It was slightly more functional than the average pool table because we had a wooden tabletop that converted it into a dining table so that once a year at Christmas we could eat dinner around it. The rest of the year, though, the leaves leaned against the wall. As I hear myself saying this out loud right now, I realize how ridiculous and privileged it all sounds, but that's just how life was when we had a middle class. As an adult, that table, and billiards in general, was little more than a distant memory until I saw this gem on Craigslist. The former owner was in the middle of moving and a divorce, so he had to give his beloved pool table away. And he seemed to be far more upset about that than he was about any of the other drama going on in his life at that moment. No judgment, just an observation. I was happy to gain from his loss though, especially since the table was free. Free items are the best because the zero cost of entry frees me to do things that I wouldn't ordinarily be willing to do to something that I paid a lot of money for. In this case, recover a pool table every other year. We recovered this table the first time as soon as we got it home. We used some relatively cheap material from Joann's because we had never done this before and we didn't want to learn with and potentially ruin the significantly more expensive wool felt that we used this time around. But even if we mess up the second time and have to take a third stab at it, we're still way, way under the cost of a new table. But I think we got a pretty good education the first time around, so this should go pretty smoothly. Let's get to it. This is a commercial table meant for public spaces, so everything is harder to get to than a regular table. The bolts that hold the rails to the table are hidden behind these metal trim pieces, so obviously they have to go first. Then we can get to the bolts that attach the rails. Each piece is held on by three 3 8 inch bolts. We're starting with the rails because they're a lot harder to do than the slate, and I always like to get the hard parts out of the way first. We made a mistake the last time we recovered this table. The only staples we had on hand were way too long for this application. Not only are they hard to remove, but they also came out the other side of the rails in places. Fortunately, this time we have shorter staples, but I'm not sure staples are even necessary. The last time we covered the table, we just copied what the previous owner did, and he used staples. But like I said, I'm not sure that they're necessary. The material we ordered came pre-cut with six rail pieces. There's a link in the description. The cushion on one of the rails is delaminated, so we tacked it back down with some spray glue. We laid the pieces out and sprayed them and one side of the rail with glue. The glue side of the rail faces down when we lay it on the center of the felt, and then the other two sides get sprayed. Then the fabric gets stretched tight over the rail. Bonnie checks to make sure that everything is laying flat, and then she staples the fabric to the rail. The hardest part of the whole process is folding the ends of the fabric over the ends of the rail. We struggled with this part the last time we did this, and we struggled again this time too. There isn't any good information out there for the best way to do this, so we just had to try folding it different ways. To get the ends to lay as flat as possible, we folded the front over the side and then pulled the top down over the front. Then we folded all of the material over the back and tacked it down. I don't think that's right. The glue is enough to hold the felt to the slate, so it's probably enough to hold the felt to the rails too. 
I think the ends of the felt should be stretched and folded over the ends of the rails the same way we did the pockets on the slate as you'll see in a bit. With the rails done, we can move on to the easy part, covering the slate. The hardest part about covering the slate is moving the slate around. I used a little leverage to lift up the slate and Bonnie slid a two x four under each side. From there, I only had to lift it up a tiny bit to rest it on the side of the table. Then we turned it 90 degrees and began ripping off the old material. The material we used last time was very thin, and when we pulled it off, we discovered that the slate was covered with chalk dust. I suspect that happens to all pool tables, but this seemed to be an excessive amount of chalk. I wiped it off with a microfiber towel and then scraped off all the old glue with a razor scraper. By far the most efficient way I've found to get the old glue up. That's a keeper. Yes. Then we put furniture sliders under the slate so we could slide it to one end of the table. That way we could work on three sides at once. Wiping the table with dry microfiber towels left a lot of chalk dust on the slate, so we went over the whole table with mineral spirits. There's probably no reason we couldn't have just used water, but mineral spirits also helped to remove the glue residue. Then we went over the whole table with acetone, mostly just to dry the mineral spirits. I don't know that this step is totally necessary, but I always like to start with a clean slate. We spread the material over the slate and lined it up to make sure there would be enough material to cover all four sides. Then we started on one end by folding back the material about six inches or so. We laid a piece of butcher paper under the end that we folded back to protect the rest of the material from overspray. And then we sprayed the material and the slate with glue, making sure to get the edge of the slate as well as the top. We let the glue sit for about five minutes. When we came back to it, Bonnie lightly misted the felt with water to help it stretch. Then we stretched the felt over the end of the slate, making sure everything was laying smooth. We repeated this process with the other short end, and then the long side of the slate that was hanging over the table. Then we slid the slate across the table to do the fourth side. Once we had all four sides tacked down, we could focus on the pockets. We cut slices in the space where the slate is cut out to make it easier to shape the material to the contours of the pocket and leave it smooth. Other than that, the pockets are basically the same as doing the four sides of the slate except that instead of four straight sides to work with, you have these tight curves. While the glue is setting up on the first corner, we can start work on the next corner. While the glue sets up on this corner, we can go back and finish the first corner. Like I said before, I think the ends of the rails can be done just like this, but we'll have to wait until the next time we recover this table to find out. There's plenty of open time with this glue, so we can take our time and make sure we get everything right. The two side pockets are a little bit harder to do than the corners because the material is a little tighter and harder to stretch along the straight edges. Where the material comes together in the corners, it's a little more forgiving. We put the slate back in the table the same way we got it out.
Then it's just a matter of reinstalling the rails and trim pieces. That's really all there is to it. If you've never done a project like this before and you're thinking about recovering your own pool table yourself, I would encourage you to do it because as far as upholstery jobs go, this is about as easy as it gets. There's no sewing or measuring involved. It's all just stretching, gluing, and stapling. Just make sure you have enough muscle on hand to move the slate around. Remember, never be afraid to try doing things you don't know anything about. We've been doing it for over two decades and it's worked out for us. Anyway, I hope you found some useful information in this video and I appreciate you taking the time to watch it.